What's up everybody, Afro Joey and like I'm going to say this before I get into this video. Watch this whole video from beginning to end. Because I'm tired of motherfuckers only listening for one minute or a few seconds and not getting the full story and they pass judgment real quickly. But I got to say something like, I got to say this. I sat here and I watched the whole Duck Dynasty, Phil Robinson getting suspended from the show. And... To me, I think it's like is how come everybody is really coming down on Phil Robinson because he said homosexuality is a sin. But when he came down to Alec Baldwin saying, calling a photographer a fag or Tracy Morgan saying, oh, if my son is gay, I'll punch him in the throat. And they have their publicist write apology letters. They're showing on TV. Look, man, when Tracy Morgan and Alec Baldwin had their publicist writing apology letters that's not them apologizing for nothing that's not apologizing for nothing but I tell you this it's like this when you see celebrities like Alan Baldwin, Alec Baldwin and Tracy Morgan sitting up there calling people fags and queers and so on and so forth using them slurs them homosexual slurs they don't get called homophobe they don't get called sexist or nothing everybody takes it with a grain of salt but when it comes to Phil Robinson y'all quick to jump the bandwagon and call him a homophobe just because he said a uh, homosexual is a sin now everybody knew that the Robinson family is a religious family and they know that because if you watch every episode and at the end of every episode they pray over dinner now that tells you they're religious. They're religious. And I'm sitting up here and I'm watching this and I say, okay, I like this show. They're religious family. And they're mine. And they, not, they ain't hurt nobody. They do what they do. Love, they love what they love best. Making duck calls and selling. Making duck calls and doing what they do. And when one of them say, oh, homosexuality is a sin. Everybody want to call them a homophobe. Or, oh whatever and I'm sitting up there questioning these people it's like you calling him a homophobe but when it's an A-list celebrity y'all quick to jump the heartbeat and forgive them real quickly because they allow their publicists to sign fake ass apology letters all Phil Robinson said was people have homosexual behavior that morphs into bestiality and people got pissed off real quick <laughs> Now you see around the world. You, now you see there's a fan page on you on Facebook. This got 100, now 1 million people liking it, and like one, uh, like a thousand, a hundred thousand people signed a petition to keep Phil Robinson back on the show. Now it's like this. I talked to some of my friends on Second Life, and they kind of agree with me on what the what the hell I say, what the hell I say. It's like. They said the same thing. It says people are getting too sensitive. When somebody say homosexual is a sin, they re quick to judge and pass judgment on the person who said homosexual is a sin. They quick so, mu so much in a heartbeat and call them a homophobe or shit like that. And then when the celebrities say fag or nigger or cracker or beaner or wetback, y'all quick to forgive them because they using racial slurs. But somebody say homosexual, y'all quick to say, oh, he's a sexy. He's a homophobe. Yada, yada, yada. Let's track up the torch and get the picture. You can hang this motherfucker. Y'all quick to do that in a heartbeat. I was like, I understand there's kids out there that are coming out the closet. And I feel bad for them because they get bullied for that. But when you sit up there and you pass judgment on somebody saying homosexual is a senior, you're no different than the bullies who pick on the kids that are gay. You're probably saying, Afro Jim, you shining with the homophobe. He's not a homophobe. He just said, he said homosexuality is a sin. And I thought our First Amendment right was the freedom of speech. And I thought we had another member that have our own, the, that we could practice our religion. And all he did was quote something out the Bible. In the Bible, the good book says, man should not lay down with man. That's from the Bible. Now you quick to just, oh, he's a motherfucker. Say, like, hold on, he quotes something from the Bible, he's a hip, he's a 
homophobe. And it's in the Bible. And it's in every religion. Homosexual. Homosexuals are not looked upon as saints. They look they look down upon as sinners. Like I come I come from a Bible Belt state myself, Tennessee. And they do that. To me it's like yes, I do go to church. I do I do believe in God and Jesus. But one thing it is, if you're gay, that's your fucking business. It's not mine. Whatever you do behind closed doors is your business. That is how I see it. If I, I have a relative that is gay, I have no shame about that. That I have a gay relative. I am not ashamed about that. When my relative came out and said, I'm gay, I said, look, we can go to a strip club if we can both have some fun. I can get a woody, you can get wet. That, that's how it is. We're both people. We bleed the same color of blood, red. Just because me and you like the same set, me and you like the same thing doesn't mean we're no different. Just because you're a female and I'm a male doesn't, it, that's the only difference part. I'm peace setting up, you peace sitting down. That's the only difference. You give birth, I can get you pregnant. That's it. Same with the man, same with the homosexual, same with the gay man. A gay man can sit there and be cool with the female that is heterosexual and they can go to a strip club for females and, and gay men. <laughs> and that's all. And so when people sit up there and sit there and call him a homophobe for saying that homosexuality is a sin, I think they blew it out the water, they blew it out of proportion. I don't think calling this man a homophobe because he believes in something that you don't. It's like I said, you can't compare apples and oranges. He says homophobe, he says homosexual is a sin. He gets called a homophobe. Alec Baldwin and Tracy Morgan can say all the racial slurs about people who are gay and they get by. They get by. They get the, get the benefit of a doubt. <laughs> And I think it's wrong that y'all look at Phil Robinson as nothing but a redneck trailer trash mother motherfucker. And I think it's unnecessary to look at him as different as you see Alec Baldwin, Tracy Morgan, Justin Bieber, whoever. Just because he built duck calls and he had started a business and his son took over and made it to a multi million dollar company does it not make him any different than and like Baldwin and Tracy Morgan, just because he's a celebrity on the small screen doesn't make it any different than a person on the big screen. But Alec Baldwin called that photographer a fag. He lost his TV show, but he can get all the movie deals he wants. Phil Robinson, he says homosexual is a sin. He's losing everything. Because huh? y'all ready to sit there and sue Phil Robinson for saying homosexuality is a sin, but y'all won't sue Alec Baldwin. Y'all won't sue an A-lister if Justin Bieber went out to the gay pie parade and got on mic and says, "All of y'all burning the hell, you fucking queer ass fags." Y'all would kiss his ass in the heartbeat. Y'all will bow down and love him no matter what. Y'all look at Justin Bieber like he can't do no wrong. But when it's somebody that's religious and says homosexuality is a sin, y'all quick to light his ass up. And that's wrong. You violate, you're violating his First Amendment right, freedom of fucking speech. That's all it is. It's like, and second thing about this is, is how people looked at the magazine GQ. Now, the report of G, uh, GQ magazine asked him a question a religious question they asked him it's like what is sin to you he gave his honest religious answer homosexuality is a sin that's the religious honest answer you cannot sit there and dog him out for that and you need them suspending him that's bullshit how come when Tracy Morgan <laughs> came to my hometown and said on Mike in front of a bunch of people saying if my son was gay I'll punch him in the throat how come he didn't get fired from 30 Rock 
How come he's still getting movie deals? That's the question. He gets painted as a saint, but Phil Robinson get painted as a homophobe? That is one thing I don't get. And it's not about money. It's not about who's an A-lister or a B-lister. It's the principle. How come one person can sit there and get away by using racial slurs and can skate by and people love them again? But on the other hand, you get somebody like Phil Robinson, they call him a, a, fuck, a fucking homophobe and quick to judge him on his religion. That's one thing I don't get. That's what I'm questioning. And then y'all got to realize, I hate tabloids with the passion. The reason why I hate tabloids is like this. When the reporter of GQ magazine interviewed him, nobody was there but Phil and the reporter. So we don't know what was said between them unless if you read the magazine whatever you read is putting is been put in the reporter's words what I mean is a reporter that writes for a magazine can write down anything he or she wants the reporter can write down this celebrity or this person think that blacks are uneducated coons and y'all believe it same if they said, I think, same as the reporter would say, I think that they'll write down, oh, Mexicans are nothing but wetbacks living off the welfare of the U.S. government. They can write down anything because we're not there. I thought people would have wised up by now. The Because one thing is, the news has been caught in lies since that's, what, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even the 90s. You know, and y'all still believe in what's been put on a piece of paper by a reporter and that's how I see it y'all quick to judge and all this and that fear I was, I was he's a mother yeah 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 I can understand if he sits there and say it on cam on tape that black folks should burn because they're nothing but coons and ignorant not a lot of water milling water eating watermelon and chicken and drinking the grape so I can understand that picture bitch all you want on that part yes on that part you can because he was out the way on it but when it comes down to somebody saying homosexuality is a sin y'all quick to judge him on his beliefs we have every right as an American citizen to believe in whatever, whoever, whenever. If you believe in God and Jesus, that's your business. That's your religion. If you believe in Buddha, that's your business. That's your religion. If you believe in Allah, that's your business. If you believe in aliens, that's your business. If you believe in Han Solo is the best God there is, that is your business. I believe in God and Jesus. Yes, I do read the Bible when I'm in church, but I keep the. But it's like this: I keep the religion at the door, and because far as I know, I'm not gonna push my religion on nobody. He's not pushing religion off on nobody. He said the the God honest truth in His own religious way. Homosexuality is a sin. He didn't say it was a right. He said it was a sin. He didn't sit there and say it was. He didn't say y'all was gonna burn in hell. He said it was a sin. And like I said, y'all wasn't there to see what he said or hear what he said. Y'all didn't see. Y'all wasn't there. All you know is what the reporter put down on a piece of paper. That's all it is. When you believe was, when you believe in what somebody put on a piece of paper, like a. Like, so, so, it's like, to me, it's like, it's, it seems like when people believe everything written down on a piece of paper, so they believe everything that's written down on a piece of paper is true. Like, oh, the Christmas story must be true. 
Also, so there really was an Ebenezer Scrooge. There real really was a Tiny Tim or Bob Cratchit. Three ghosts really, really came to a rich man and made him change his mind about helping others in need. Also, it's true that the Little Mermaid is real. Some half female human being and half fish really talk to people on land. Also, it's true some white girl set up there and met seven little white dudes and was about to get killed by her evil queen mother. Also, it's true that Cinderella was a slave to her evil stepmother and stepsister. It must be true because you believe in everything that's in the GQ magazine, but you don't. But you don't believe in a fairy tale. You gotta look at these tabloids like it is a fairy tale. Whatever they put out on a piece of paper, you can't always believe in. You can't. Some things you can, some things you can't believe in, because 50% of what's been printed on papers are true, facts, real. The other 50% is bullshit fairy tales made up fantasy. When George Lucas wrote the Star Wars book, it was labeled as a fantasy, not real. Same as when... Charles Dick Charles Dickens wrote the Christmas story. Same as the guy that wrote the Knickerbocker wrote the Rip Van Winkle and Sleepy Hollow fiction, not real. And that's how it is. And people are taking it out of hand, or take it, blowing it out of proportion because of what they read in the magazine. And people, and I'm. And, and I'm sitting there it's like, oh my god, these people are that ignorant, that stupid, that retarded to believe in what the tabloid says. If a tabloid says the sky is green, the grass is blue, you gonna believe it? I guess so. You believe in what GQ says. You believe in what GQ says. If GQ is saying the, that the, it's gonna rain big titty bitches with fat asses and, a, and some weed, would y'all believe it? I guess so, because you believe what they said about Phil Robinson. I guess so. If the GQ magazine reported that says Tracy Morgan, not Tracy Morgan, but Selena Gomez was really a guy, that she had a sex change, y'all would believe it because that's what they do. They print the lies, but never the truth. Then you got to remember, 20% of what they report is based on lies. They don't, well, actually, probably 30%. But the rest is nothing but BS and a fucking piece of paper. <coughs> no, I'm excuse me about the cough, but, <sighs> but it is what it is. You criticize this man based on his religion. That makes you a hypocrite. Because you can't sit there and serve, two, like they say, you can't sit there and serve two gods. You can't sit up there and say, I believe in Jesus, I'm a homosexual. But I think he's a hypocrite because he hates faggots. You can't be a hypocrite on that. I think if, look to me, I support gay people no matter which way or what. If they want to be like everybody else, mirrors run, get married, go the fuck right ahead. I'm not going to stop them. It's not my job to. I leave all this judgmental stuff up to God or whatever guides you got. It's not my job to base my <laughs> judgment on who should die and burn in hell to who should serve in heaven it's not my job it's God's job your God my God his God her God the he she job whatever God you got is their God and that's how I see it if you don't like what I got to say you can kiss my ass and burn hell man cause I can tell you this I know I'm gonna catch some haters now these haters that's gonna sit up there and criticize me and call me motherfuckers think about this before you criticize me start jumping the gun when you start calling Phil Robinson a hypocrite when you start calling Phil Robinson a homophobe think of how many kids just killed themselves because you just bullied somebody you're just as guilty as a bully who bullies a teenage homosexual to death you're no different than them when you bully Phil Robinson because of his religion and his opinions and his freedom of speech you're no different than a bully that bullies a person to 
bullies a teen to commit suicide. <laughs> That's how it is. You're no different. If I was like to me, I'm not gonna jump on the bandwagon and sit there and pass judgment on him on his religious beliefs. I I agree like in the religious way, I agree with him all the way. It is a sin to be a homosexual. But as a human being, I believe that they have every right to be happy just like the next person in line. They have every right as a human being as to sit there and date the same sex and they have every right to marry the same sex they they are they have every right to be a parent and share their parenting job with the same sex because it's not my job is there is no law passed off that says homosexuals cannot get married homosexuals cannot have have kids if so <laughs> if there's such is a law about that hey man I can't do nothing about it it is what it is. <laughs> now, and, and, and that's how I should. Let me, I'm going to say this. A teen boy was picked on because he was gay. And he got to a point where he got killed for being gay because the guy was reading, the kid was reading a book about Adolf Hitler. And the boy, I think the boy was set free. And nobody jumped the bandwagon. Nobody blew pull out the rainbow flag, nobody to sit up there and blew the horn. Ellen didn't get off her high horse, need the rose to the site. The boy should be convicted. No, that did not happen. But now since he said homosexuality is a sin, y'all quick to jump, go to Rosie and go to Ellen and go to other homosexual celebrities and say, jump on the bag wagon and be like us and pass judgment on him. Why pass judgment? You know better than the like when you pass judgment on Phil Robinson because he said homosexuality is a sin, you know better than the person, people in the KKK, the Black Panthers, the Nazis, neo Nazis, whatever. You know better than them passing judgment on somebody's religion. You know better than that. See, kids need a parent, a teacher to teach them things in life. They don't need a fucking brigade. You're starting to look like Kyle Von Slosky's mother. You know, the little kid out of the South Park that wore the green hat. The mother was a bitch because she took everything so seriously. You're starting to act like her, Miss Von Slosky. And you're sitting up there acting just like her. He You're no different than the people who bully. And it sits up there and I look at it and say, A and E and you're falling for this shit. When you made when you signed that contract with these people, knowing that how religious these people are, you signed it you're breaching your fucking contract with the damn people, with the Robinson family. You're breaching oh, we're gonna fire one of y'all, we're gonna suspend one of y'all because of your religion. You signed the contract. And the first thing they said was, the first thing when they came to do the whole deal about Duck Dynasty show is when them praying. And then A&E said, we're not going to do the religious thing in the show. They say, if we don't do it, we won't. They made a contract that these people can put their religion in the show. I say, now look at it, it's like, okay, it's just a family praying at supper. Praying, praying at supper. What's different about anybody else praying at supper besides an atheist? Atheists don't pray at supper, I don't think. But I know that some people in every other religion do pray at supper. But y'all sit up there and pass your... They're not pushing religion out for you. This just showing, showing y'all that they're a good, loving family and they believe in the Bible. They're not thumping the Bible. They're not going to going up to you say you need to stop being a homosexual before you burn that y'all I ain't seen that when you see it it's like Phil Robinson has four kids four boys you only get to see three of them there's Willie and there's Jabe and there's Jazz the fourth one you seen when he re the fourth Robinson sign you seen and he was the one preaching their wedding that was the fourth sign 
and y'all treat him like he's a damn racist, man. When Paula Dean said she said nigga before, y'all jumped her ass like a fucking heartbeat. <sighs> y'all jumped her in a heartbeat. When Michael Richard said nigga constantly, y'all jumped his ass in a heartbeat. And I'm tired of this shit, man. He says uh, homosexuality is a sin. You quick to call him a homophobe and every other fucking name in the book except a child of God. Uh, but, uh, what, like, for real, man, watch up on this bandwagon because of his religion. Y'all no different than them damn bullies in school and online. So to me, when I see somebody bullying him because of his religion, it means you you hate your kids and you want your kids to die too. Because if you're bullying your ki if you're bullying him, you know different than the bullies in the school and that's online. You know different. You're the same. Look, why don't why not jump on the bandwagon for something good, man? Like, I've sat there and I've seen Lady Gaga jump on the bandwagon. Same sex marriage, yay. Homosexuals in the army, yay. Something like that, jump on it. But when it's somebody saying, speaking their belief about, speaking their beliefs on the religion, that should not be a fucking problem. It shouldn't be a big ass issue. It shouldn't be something to sit there and use as a weapon. Your God is my weapon. That's what's wrong with people. They want to use somebody's religion as a weapon towards to get back at them. I support. Uh, uh, I support Phil Robinson, but you got to look at it like this: It's 2013. It's time to grow up a little bit. It's time to grow up a little bit. That's what I gotta say. But second thing is, you don't sit there and judge a man on his damn religion. You're just as bad as the people judging homosexuals, judging black folks, judging white folks, judging Hispanics, judging Asian folks, judging Jewish people. You're no different than them. When you start doing that, you're no better than a bully. And that's one thing that gets on my nerves. I say, if you cannot sit there and judge him because what he believes in. You're just as bad as the people bullying the kids in school. And that's how I see it. <laughs> this has been Afro Joe 10 like a TA. It's like I said, watch the whole damn video instead of sitting up there skimming through it. But this has been Afro Joe 10 like a TA is. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on, I meant to say, follow me on Twitter at Afro Joe the Wookie. Follow me on Tumblr. Scott on my channel, Silo June 2, Silo June 3. You, that's how it is. Don't pass judgment on somebody's religion because you're no different than the people who are racist, who are sexist, who are a homophobe. Oh. That's how it is. You're no different. You're just, just like the, you're just like the kids in school bullying. <laughs> you're just like the bullies in school and, and online. You don't mind for your kids to die, getting bullied to death. You don't mind. To me, my eyes, that's how I see it. This has been Afro Joe 10 like a T. I I had to get this shit off my chest anyway because this shit was getting on my nerves. Peace, love, and Afro... Peace, love, and Afro Chris. And shit, man. Do the right thing instead of being some fucking hypocrite. Damn. Grow the fuck up. Ain't any... I can tell you about to catch a lawsuit. It's bad enough saying if they don't... Look, they already see it. The Robinson clan already, the Robinson families already say, if you don't bring Phil back on, we're walking. It's in contract, motherfuckers. You can't break contract. Since all, since every every member of their family signed a contract with A and E, and they all clearly states that they need that they are packed. They are packed. So if you fire one of them, you just breach the contract. So they have every right to sue an A and E. Peace, love, and Afro Greece. Tell me what you think. Do you think Phil was in the wrong? Do you think people are bullying him just like the kids in school because of his religion? Or do you think this just was a misunderstanding? Peace out.